as it thinks. Yeah. Uh, just a few announcements before we get started. Firstly, uh, myself and Mary would love, like to thank you for your donations over the weekend. And uh, we're getting to use some of these donations now and trying to fix up the sound quality of different things that we're doing. So, uh, so we've got enough donations now to uh, get, um, we've ordered nearly $4,000 worth of sound equipment as a result. And uh, pretty soon um, we'll be needing to order another backup drive, which costs us around $2,000. So, because we're chewing up data like it's going out of fashion at the moment. <laughs> Um, because every talk that we do now, we have around 30, 72 to 75 gigabytes of data from every talk. So, uh, so one, so, um, so that's one talk, and so the last two days is two talks. So there's 150 gigabytes just every every weekend that we uh, go through, and obviously then on on Monday night there'll be another 45 or 50 gigabytes. So for for a whole session, you're talking like Right, nearly th two to three hundred gigabytes of data, and so one. Well, we've got a six terabyte drive, which I know doesn't sound, sounds fairly large, but um, but we chew it up pretty rapidly now. So um, that's what's happening with our electronics, and hopefully ourselves and electronics get along a bit better. And um, we'd also like to thank those uh, of you who are putting some effort into doing things like. Uh, translating and transliterating the DVDs uh, because I feel in the long run that's going to have a very large benefit um, with people being able to download entire documents and things like that. Um, so it's going to be really, really good to have those things in different languages. And I feel quite strongly actually that this year is going to be a very interesting year of growth um, in terms of lots of people around the world starting to be attracted to the divine love path. and. And a lot of those attractions will occur because of you and the changes you make. So what I'm finding happens is if in a location there's a group of people who really focus on living in truth and living in love and doing the soul changes, that attracts a whole group of people around them who start wanting to hear about truth and, and those kind of things. And, and you'll find the more you do it, the faster those attractions occur. And so a lot of the growth uh, is now starting to happen because of you, the work you're doing yourself emotionally. And that's really wonderful. And that being said, um, Millie is running some sessions that I just want to let you know about. Uh, they're two-hour emotional, working with emotions type sessions. Uh, I'll read some of her details here for you. Um, I'll tell you the dates. I'll write them up in a minute. It's an opportunity to get through some blocks and into some core emotions dependent upon your desires. Um, it's, she's got bring a towel, some tissues or hankies. Um, definitely bring some tissues for sure, I'd say. And a towel I find is very helpful for laying on the ground when you got really snotty, right? Um, wear comfortable clothing, clothing. Eat minimum food, suggestion fruit. Avoid coffee, coffee, carbs, and any addictions. This is Millie's notes, by the way. Allow yourself the time afterwards. Don't be in a big rush to be somewhere else afterwards. And pray and pray and pray, she says. These sessions are by donation. Millie travels from Widgee, uh, which is nearly an hour, it's an hour and a half each way, to, to Peter's. And I think they're going to be held at Peter's home. And to book, you will need to book with Millie. And... Uh, um, I will be putting the details of this on the website, so any of you who want the details, including the dates and the times, it will be on the website sometime over the next week, depending when I get to it. If I just give you the dates, um, there's Monday uh, the 15th of Feb from 8.30 to 10.30. There's the 22nd, Monday the 22nd of Feb. From 10.30... Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. On each day, you're going to be running two, four two-hour sessions. Awesome. That's very good. So, so basically, with the first session on it, one day is 8.30, 10.30, then it's 10.30 to 12.30. Then there's 
1.30 to 3.30 and then there's 3.30 to 5.30. So they're just two hour sessions and the days that they happen the 1st of March and the 29th of March. Millie's phone number, by the way, is 54840229. If she doesn't answer it, that's because she's probably processing herself. So just leave a message on there saying what, you know, what day you're hoping to come along to and what session so that she can book you in. And um, Millie does everything by donation, so... Um, so everything, and obviously Peter is donating his venue, so that's uh, wonderful as well. And uh, obviously a lot of these things are there designed just to help you get over some humps that you may be feeling from an emotional perspective. Uh, so that that'll be good. Everyone's fine with that? So everyone knows what's available there? That's good. Um, Tristan is also going to be starting to do some sessions too, but we haven't, he hasn't discussed with me yet the times or the location, but uh, that'll be happening too soon for people who want to do sessions with him too. Um, at the moment, um, I'm pretty selective with who I will advertise as regards to doing sessions for a number of reasons. And one of the, the, main, the main reason is that people need to be fully, I feel, fu if they're going to be people who are leading sessions, need to be fully in their own emotional processing work and in a really good state of humility. And, and, and I feel both Millie and Tristan are very much in those states. So, so, and, uh, and as others come along, obviously, um, I'll present those to you as well. What we want to do is help as many people as possible just to work their way through those blocked, those blockages and into the emotions. Once you get into the swing of doing it yourself, you'll find you won't need much assistance after that. Um, but, uh, but before then, quite often we need quite a lot of assistance to get through some of our blockages. So that's what is happening. And obviously that's Millie's and Tristan's desire as well. I really like your card, Millie. I, I was thinking about getting a card once, but... I just have on it written Jesus and then like, <laughs> it's just like, I don't think that's going to be very effective. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know where to put my address. Um, either. <laughs> well, there's a lot of homes I've got, but uh, a lot of them are not here. Um, yeah, so... Um, with regard to helping and getting assistance, obviously as more and more people really get in tune with their staff and really there's going to be a lot of you who get to the point where you feel like you're ready to help others and, um, and some of you may come to me and talk to me about that. Um, I will give you, if you want, some feedback about my perceptions about some of the emotions that are there, if you want. Um, obviously. Any person who comes and says to me, oh, can you put my stuff on the website or whatever, that's going to be very dependent upon how I feel you've gone with your emotions and, and your openness and your humility. And so don't be offended if I don't put your details down just yet because of some of the comments that I've made to you. Uh, so that's uh, just an aside issue. On our website, we've created some more different uh, panels down the side. One is about workshops, so in the future there'll be more and more workshops that you'll see present on that. And uh, there is also another panel that we've created called Personal Assistance. And there's also been an idea mooted uh, by some that eventually there may be some kind of hotline, uh, like almost like a lifeline top hotline, for people on the Divine Love Path who can ring up about an emotion they're in that there are some people who can respond to at the other end of the phone. So. There are all these kind of things that people have got some ideas about and uh, I feel sooner or later through the law of attraction and, and your desires, a lot of these things will start happening over the coming year, I believe. And that's going to be very interesting, isn't it? Because it's going to mean there's more help available, more personal assistance available. Um, and then, of course, when we're getting into our blockages, 
more help available there. But also some are mediumistic, so that also means that they can let you know about spirit attractions that are going on and uh, you know spirits that are connected to you and things like that. And that's also going to be very helpful, I feel, in terms of working your way through different emotions. So it's going to be a very interesting year, I believe. Anyway, let's get to this uh, subject of answering some questions for some spirits who are present. That's if there are any questions that... Uh, well, no, I've just, uh, of course, heard that there are plenty of questions. It's just whether they can let me know them through somebody. So um, any of you who feel somebody with you? Uh, Natalie, you want to go first? Let's go first. Um, there's five different spirits, AJ, that have asked me just one question each. Yep. The first one, his name is John. Yep. And his question is, I'm very alone here. None of my family are with me. Yep. If our injuries are generational and I know they have passed, why are they not here with me? Yep. Is that the only question he's got? That's the only question. Okay. Um, how does he feel about his family, Natalie? He has a strong, needy projection to have family with him. He misses them. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and where is he at the moment? Is he in quite a dark space or is he in quite a bright space himself? No, it's pretty dark. And does he have any other persons around him? Yes, but no one he knows. Okay. And do they all have exactly the same emotion about their family? Yes. They so seem to be angry. They seem to be angry about the fact their families are not with them. Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, one thing for everyone to bear in mind, including our spirit friend, is that when you pass over, the law of attraction is very exact in its operation. Whereas on Earth, on Earth, you can ignore a lot of your law of attraction. So on the earth, for example, I can ignore certain feelings inside of myself and go around and visit my family. Does that make sense? In the spirit world, the law of attraction is a lot more exact in that if I have certain emotions towards different members of my family or about different members of my family, they will actually feel those emotions and that will cause, in many cases, a repulsion rather than an attraction. So I try to visit them, but I can't visit them because they're repulsed by me for some reason, by some reason. So, so on earth, I can get around that by going around to visit them physically, right? But in the spirit world, I can't get around these laws that operate even in a physical manner. So let's look at the situation. When he grew up, this feeling of alone, this feeling of being alone is a big feeling for him, isn't it? Yes, he f said when you were talking just before that he feels like his family doesn't want him. Yes. And, and when he was a child, what did he feel? When he was a child on earth. Unimportant. Can he see that his family didn't really want him? Yes. Yes. So, so, so the truth is, the reason why he's not with his family is, is that his family does not want him and he needs to feel the grief of that emotion. Does that make sense? At the moment what he's doing is he's staying in the anger and projecting, I want my family, I want my family, I want my family to be with me, which is something he felt all of his life and tried very hard to make happen all of his life without very much success while he was on earth. Yes. Right? And so what he's doing now is he's in the, arrived in the spirit world and the, and the truth of the spirit world is when we have certain emotions coming from us, like his family do not want him. The truth is his family do not want him and he needs to allow himself to feel the grief of that. The other thing that's very important to understand for him is that there is a whole family waiting for him to work his way through that emotion but it's not the same family that he had on earth. And, I, and by the way, what I'm saying applies to everyone in his company as well. So everyone that's surrounding him who also has this same emotion needs to work through this fact that their family did not actually want them. It's a truth. They did not want them. And Can he's, you say that someone else wants us then? Yes, that, and that's the thing I want to help, help him with, is the fact that even though his family doesn't want him, there are a whole group of people in the spirit world who love him and want him. 
and they are all willing to even show themselves to him now if they if the these people would like to see them but the problem is that all of the ones who have been alone have been wanting their family wanting their family and no one else is good enough you see because they're not willing to grieve the fact that their family didn't want them they should be loved by them yeah and they feel they have a feeling that my family should love me now by the way this is a huge emotion on this planet my family should love me above anyone else i should love my family above anyone else and it's an error based emotion that's not the case at all we should love ourselves as much as if each of you were my sister brother father mother i should love you the same even though i don't know you yet as if i love my sister father brother or mother in the physical sense now there's a whole group of people in the spirit world who love him that amount which is far more than his family actually loves him but to actually get access to them he will need to deal with this grief about the fact that he, his family do not love him and he needs to accept the truth of it emotionally and that means grieving and crying about the fact that they didn't demonstrate any love for him while he was on earth does that make sense yes if he allows himself to do that what will happen if you allow yourself to do that what will happen is that you'll quickly release this emotion and you'll also draw to you people who do actually love and care for you but they won't be your family members because many of your family members are actually in darker places than you are and because of that they couldn't even get to you if they wanted to right? and the reason why they're in darker places than you are is because they have darker emotions than you have and so they will need to work through those emotions and in this process of learning through this emotion of your own you in fact in the future may be able to assist them but don't assist them from the point of view that you want them to love you because in the end that's a unloving thing or an unloving demand inside of us so while from god's perspective your family should love you just like your family should love anybody right god allows free will and they and they chose through their free will to not love you and that's due to their own emotional injuries and the key is to understand there is a group of people who want to love you but it's just not going to be your family for a while yet he wants very much to meet these people okay well let's bring them to him and uh and they're going to show themselves now you notice they're very bright bright yes. people they are ones who have learned about love and have learned that family love is not as important as these other types of love and if he can just allow himself to feel a lot of the grief they'll be able to help him through that because they have experienced it themselves and they'll be able to show him what to do in order to actually feel and release that emotion that he needs his family because the truth is that he doesn't need his family in order to feel loved yeah he can feel their love yeah he, they actually will project a bit of love at you you feel that they love you mm. Mm. one thing i'd just like to say to everyone about this is that you'll be surprised how many family emotions you think you don't have and then you start working through a whole group of emotions surrounding the importance of family and you realize like there's a it's a minefield when it comes to your emotional state and uh, many times when people pass they're locked up in this place of badly needing mummy or daddy's love do you know what i mean but the mummy or daddy were in darker conditions than they themselves are when they passed and so they're not going to get any love from mummy or daddy they're going to have to choose to release the emotion so they don't want the love from mummy and daddy and instead want love from god which is obviously going to be the most powerful love they'll ever experience so what i'd like to say to, to john is that if you can allow yourself to understand that at the moment while you're demanding love from mummy and daddy from your family what you're forgetting is there is god who is your real dad and mum who wants to love you and when you start longing for that love you'll feel just this powerful overwhelming feelings of love coming from god and you'll realize that you don't need the love from mum and dad anymore and you'll also realize too that mum and dad's love is a gift so when they want to give it they'll start giving it until then they will not give it but god always wants to give it so he has he feels better 
hearing that and yeah. has had no concept of God before. No. And the trouble is for most of us on earth is we have very little concept of God even if we're brought up in a religion. We have very little true concept of God. And that is that God is a parent who wants to love us and it's a feeling of love we can receive from God when we open to it. But while we're projecting the demand of love to somebody else other than God, we were not, we're not going to actually experience God's love. So many of us are hooked into getting love from our family and while we have that hook into our family, what's going to happen is we're not going to receive love from God. And the reason why is because we're longing for the love from our family and not from God. It's only when you begin to long for the love from God that you will receive the love from God, if that makes sense. Until that point in time, we're projecting this really needy emotion at our family. And really, in a way, what we're doing is we're substituting our family, God, for our family. In other words, we don't believe there's a God and we don't have a concept of God. And instead, what we want is love from a person we can see who will give us a feeling that we're looking for. And the problem with that, obviously, is it depends on their condition as to whether we'll receive that love. And like I said earlier, often our parents are the creator of all of our damaged emotions. So often they are not in as good condition as we ourselves are. And so it's going to be very, very long struggle for us if we're waiting for our parents to love us before we love ourselves or before we connect to God. He says thank you. No and worries. He wants he's to hear more of what these spirits. Yeah, have these said. spirits want to talk to him, and he's already talking to them. Yeah. Um, there's another spirit. Her name is Mary. Mm -hmm. Her question is: I hear of God's love helping me to progress to better places in this world. Mm -hmm. How do I get this love? Because I really want to progress. I don't like where I am. And um, where are you, Mary? Hi. It feels like I'm in a black hole. Yep. Are there other people with you or not? Yes, lots. Lots of people. And how do they all feel? Similar to you? Very sad. Yep. And you have a lot of grief? Yes. And what's the grief mostly about? My life. And what about your life? You want to tell me? You're quite ashamed of your life. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, no, no one here is going to judge your life, so you can speak freely about it, but you don't have to. I was a prostitute. Right. Yeah. And when you passed, what what happened when you passed? I went to this horrible place. Yeah. And I can't. Get away from here. And you talk of God's love. Yeah. And I've never felt any love. Yeah. And I want to progress. If I can leave here, I want to. Yeah. Well, the first thing we're going to do is ask if that's all right. I know you feel very ashamed. But what if I ask some spirits who have also been prostitutes in the past who, are now, who now connect to God, what if I ask them to come and just be with you while I talk to you? Is that all right with you? Okay, so can you see some of them now with you? Yes. They are the bright ones. Yeah. Now, now understand what I'm saying is these ones have been prostitutes too. <laughs> they you do not look like me. No. So obviously you can get out of where you are if these ones have got out of where they were. What they're going to do for a moment is just get project to you where they were when they first arrived in the spirit world. So can you see the pictures of where they arrived in the spirit world when they first arrived? Yes. So what do you notice? They were worse than me. Yeah, that's right. So, so if they were in a more terrible condition than you are right now, then obviously you can get out of where you are right now. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Well, let's talk about how to do that. Here's God. So let's say, draw a picture of God. So you can see this picture, can you? Yes. If Natalie looks at it, she'll, you'll be able to see it. Fine. All right. So here's God. Here's your soul. You are actually half of a soul. So I'm going to draw the soul like this so you can see there's another half of you as well. How long ago did you pass? 
500 years. Right, okay. So, um, and where did you live then? Around about? Portugal, Spain. Right, so south, uh, in, in Europe. Yeah. Yep, okay. <coughs> And, uh, and and how did you die, actually? Because I need to, I feel you need to address that a little bit emotionally. I was murdered. Right, yep. Okay. And do you notice that many of the ones who were with you were sort of in the same, they've had similar things happen to them? Many of them... There are many women here in pain. Yeah, and no, although many of them haven't been prostitutes, they've acted like prostitutes while they were on earth. Yes. Yep. So there's a whole group of them with you. Yep. And so what I'm going to say really does apply to you as a group as well as to you individually. Here's what I'd call your soul. Now your soul is connected to your body. So when you were on earth you actually had, I'll draw you as a skirt, there you go. While you were on earth you had, you had two bodies. One was your physical body and one was your spirit body, right? You, you remember that when you were on earth? I know it's a while ago. Yes. Yep. So, so when your physical body died, when, when you were murdered, you instantly knew that something had happened and changed for you. And now can you see you've got your own spirit, spirit body still there? But yeah. you can see that it's quite distorted. Like there's, it's ugly. It's, it's ugly. Uglier than what you looked when you were on earth. What I remember, yes. Yeah, okay. Now... The reason why that's the case is because connected to your spirit body is something you can't see. And that thing that you can't see is called your soul. Right? And what happens is, as you work your way through different things on earth, different things that you choose to do and different things that happen to you and all those kind of things, all these emotions enter you. So a heap of emotions and beliefs that enter you emotionally. So there's emotions and beliefs that entered you, right? And they become a part of your soul. And then your spirit body reflects the condition of your soul. Does that make sense so far? Yes. To you? So, and remember you're half of a soul. So you've got a soul mate somewhere else in the spirit world as well. All right? Now. Are they damaged like me? No, no, they may not be. The feeling I have is that your soulmate is not. And in fact, your soulmate's been around you for quite some time and you haven't even recognised them because of their condition. Do you, would you like to see him? Yes. Yeah, well, he's, 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 can you see him now? Yes. Yeah. And what's he like? He's so beautiful. He's really beautiful, isn't he? Yeah. And that's... And the key is to not get into shame here about yourself. The key is to understand that you remember right back at the beginning I showed the, the ones who were bright and really beautiful, they were just in a worse condition than you when they first passed, right? You remember that? Yes. So you've got to remember that you can be just as beautiful as those ones too. Does that make sense? In this process you've got to remember that and stay and remind yourself of that all the way through this process that I'm going to describe to you. Right? So what we want to do is actually help you understand that, right, well, lots of things happened to you and there were choices you made when you are on the earth and that caused the soul to, to get darker and darker in its condition. And that influences your spirit body. So your spirit body gets darker and darker in its condition. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, now what happens when you pass is you become aware of how dark your spirit body's condition is and then for you, you went into a lot of shame, right? And you've been feeling lots of shame and it's been quite hard for you, hasn't it, over this time? Yes. But what I'd like to do now is just show you how you can start letting go of all of this darkness that's there, and st which is to do with feeling emotions. Do you remember emotions from Earth? And you're having some now, obviously. You're having the emotion of grief and shame now, so that's an emotion. Yes. Yep, you remember that? So I remember anger and hate very yeah. well. Yes. So the problem is, is that anger and hate are what are called, what we would call capping or blocking or self-deception type emotions. And what I mean by that is that anger and hate prevent you from releasing your soul's condition. 
And what we need to do is get under the anger and hate and into the real emotions that guide the anger and hate, which is fear and grief. Does that make sense to you? So what, what you have been doing a lot is working through emotions of anger and hate, right? But, but what the real emotions that heal you and we're going to make your spirit body brighter are going to be fear and grieving type emotions. Does that make sense? So you'll need to allow yourself to experience them. But there's a fast way you can do this. What you do is inside of yourself you can have a longing which is like, let's call it a passionate desire. Would you, do you know what I mean by that? Can you explain it a bit better? Did you ever have a friendship or somebody you loved on earth that you really, really wanted to be with? Yes. Yeah? Do you remember how you had a really strong, passionate desire for them? I wanted to be like them. Yeah? And, uh, and what happened in, in the process? They hurt you, did they? No, I disappointed them and hurt them. Right. And I didn't be around them for the shame that I caused them. Yeah, okay. So if you can reconnect, instead of connecting to the shame, if you can connect to this passionate desire, but direct that kind of desire that you had towards God. So you say to yourself, if there's a God out there, that what I would like is to start to receive your love. But instead of just saying the words, you actually have a really strong feeling inside of you that matches those words. Does that make sense? Yes. Now what will happen as soon as you start having a strong feeling that matches those words, there will be a connection that happens between you and God. And you'll actually feel this connection at the beginning, but you won't see it because it will be too bright for you to see. But you'll feel it. And when you feel this connection, some of God's love will flow into you and you'll feel really overwhelmed and you'll probably want to have a big cry about it, right? But then what will happen is that some of your fears and some of your grief will come up, just like it's been coming up in our conversation. And you'll need to let yourself feel that while you're receiving God's love. Now, these spirits that are with you, these two spirits who are with you who were prostitutes when they were on the earth and who passed over in a darker condition than you, they can show you how to work through all of this stuff. But it's going to mean you stopping getting into this area all the time and starting to feel more of these emotions. Does that make sense? More of the emotions of fear and grief rather than the emotions of anger and hate. Can they help all of us here? They can help all of you, yes. There's whole groups of people waiting to help all of you. So yes, you certainly can be all assisted. All right. But what you will need to do yourself is this. You will need to allow your emotions to flow instead of trying to stop them with your anger and your hate. Does that make sense? So that is hard. That is hard because every time you start having an emotion and start crying, a lot of times you want to get into the hate, don't you, again, and want to get into the anger again. I remember who caused the emotion. Yeah. And what we need to do is get back into the grief of that emotion. Does that make sense? Now, these spirits that are with you, they'll help you do that and they'll also help you understand this longing that you can have for God. And this longing you have for God can actually make this happen very rapidly, but it's going to mean you being completely open to feeling your emotions. And that's going to be the hard part for you because you've spent a lot of your life in, this, in these emotions and not really feeling these emotions very much. Do yeah. you promise this is true? Well, how, do, how about you ask that question of the spirits that are with you? They say yes. Okay. So they know what happened to them, don't they? They've actually been through what you're going to go through. Yes. Yeah. It so, feels so impossible. Yeah. And do you notice that they felt it might have been impossible before they began to? <laughs> yes, we look so different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is possible, you see, and it's very possible to change very rapidly as well. I want to change. Yeah. So, And you're ready to change, by the way, so... So this is really good. So my suggestion is allow them to show you about this connection with God and having a passionate desire for God and long for God's love to enter you. But to remember that there will be times when you'll be tempted to be angry again and tempted to be resentful and hate, feel hatred again. And whenever those times are there, 
the spirits who are with you will probably want to leave you for a bit why, until you get back into these emotions, the more fear and grieving type emotions. Because these emotions they can help you with. This one they can't help you very much with. Does that make sense? You need to feel them, but, but they are there because you don't want to feel these. Does that make sense? You, and whenever you choose to not feel your grief and not feel your fear, then you'll be very tempted to get angry again. I understand. Yeah. And if you can allow yourself to step back down into those emotions, what's going to happen is God's love will start flowing through you on a regular basis and you'll feel very brighter very quickly. And you're, where you're currently living, which is not very nice, is it? It's a terrible place that you're living. Yeah. Um, it will change very rapidly as well. Thank you. Can just for a moment, just to show you, can the other spirits show you where they live? They show you a picture of where they live? <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of place you'd like to live, isn't it? Yeah. So if they could get from a place that's in worse condition than you to that place, then that proves, doesn't it, that you can do the same. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll let you talk with them. They need to give you a hug too because they've got a lot of crying to do, haven't they? Yep. So that was Mary. Does anyone have a question about Mary? Uh, let's go on to the next. The next spirit is Marcus. Yep. And his question is, I am a murderer and I am in much pain for my sins. Yeah. How can I repent? So I do not feel this pain anymore. Yep. Um, Marcus, how long ago did you pass? 157 years ago. Right. So, and, and where were you, where did you pass from? The Americas. Right. And how many people did you murder? 500. And that was in a war, was it? Or a yes. civil, civil war? Or and for pleasure. And for pleasure, yeah. Okay. Um, and that's, uh, that's obviously you're feeling quite bad about that now, yeah? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, the question you asked was about repentance. So let's talk about what that means. Repentance is an emotion that you feel when you understand the full effect of the things you've done. Does that make sense to you? And you can direct this emotion towards God. So what? So if you can picture God, God's in her heavens. And he is you, one half of a soul, masculine half of the soul. And you can connect with God and God can connect with you. And you can connect with God through this way of actually demonstrating to God that you feel this repentance emotion for the things that you've done. But to feel full repentance requires not just to feel sorry for yourself or sorry for you know, the pain you're now in. Do you understand? Rather, I feel that every day. Rather it means to feel sorry for the pain you caused others. Now that's very different than feeling sorry for, about the pain you're in. Does that make sense? What if some of them deserved it? Ah, you see, this is when you feel sorry for the pain you've caused others, you will not feel that emotion. You will never feel like anybody deserved to die. All right? And that's an indication that actually what some of the sorry that you're feeling is not actually sorrow about what you've done, but just sorrow for the pain you're in. Do you follow me? Yes. Now, let's look at this issue of they deserved it. So you obviously had some anger towards them, Yes. Yes. That you then caused the, that, that then caused you to take their life. Yes. Okay. 
Now, all anger is above your fear. So there was something you were afraid of in that situation. What were you afraid of? Violation. In terms of sexually violated or a yes. violation of your partner or... Family, friends. Yeah. So, Powerlessness. Yeah. Okay. So the grief emotions are that you felt if you didn't do something that you would be powerless and these things, bad things might happen to you. Is I didn't it? want to feel that. I wanted to take the power back. Yes. Yeah. Can you see your choice to take the power back caused you, in fact, to then cause pain to others rather than to be the recipient of pain from others? An eye for an eye. Yeah, that's the, that's the motivation you had. But that is an untruth as well from God's perspective. There is no such thing as a justification for an eye for an eye. That is unfair. That's not actually unfair. Because the reason why is God created all these wonderful laws that actually mean that if you allow yourself to die in certain situations rather than causing pain to others, allow yourself to have pain caused to you, as soon as you pass, you would have passed in a much, much better location. Right? And the reason why is because that act requires love from you. And everything in the spirit world operates on love, not upon hatred or anger. So well, the reason why you are where you are is about the lack of love that you feel towards others. And that's about how strongly you feel emotionally with anger and the justification of violence. Now many people on earth pass, as you know, with the justification of violence. And so what I'm saying to you applies to them just as much as it applies to you. Does that make sense? So yes. I'm not singling you out. I'm just letting you know what God's laws are on these issues. So what God's law is, is that if I, if I want to avoid my grief and in my fear of feeling my grief, I choose to take an angry act and the angry act causes pain for another person, then there is a law of compensation emotion that's imposed upon my feelings in my soul about that. And that will cause me personal pain when I pass. And this is the reason why you're in pain. Because there's quite a lot of pain you've caused others. All right? yes. and, and now you're feeling the consequences of those choices. Now, what repentance is, is feeling sorry directing the sorrow towards God, but feeling sorry for the pain you caused others. Now, the only way you can do that, if you think about it, is by feeling the reason why you chose to cause this pain to others. Does that make sense? Yes, they hurt so many. Yes. And, and the need to <laughs> grieve that. Does that make sense to you? So just let yourself grieve these emotions. Let yourself grieve your way through these things. And when you grieve your way through these things, you will no longer feel angry towards them and you'll realise that there was no need to cause them pain. All you needed to feel was your own grief. I am sorry. Yeah. Now, you can talk to God about that, how sorry you are, and you'll find God will, you will receive love from God through that process. And so God's love, you'll feel a feeling of forgiveness from God and it's a feeling really of love that comes from God when you're repentant for the, your actions. Right? So if you can direct that, and it's going to require that you do this quite a bit, you're going to need to cry quite a lot about this because there's quite a lot of pain that you've caused others and you'll need to direct that to God. Now, just to show you that it's possible to get out of this situation by doing this, what I want to do is again bring some spirits to you who've gone through the process, who were murderers on earth. Now some of them have murdered a lot more than 500 people. Well, one of them is some of my friends from the first century. He is Judas? Yeah. They do not look like me. 
No, but you can look like them by working your way through their, your emotions the same way they have. So what I'd like you to do now is to talk with them and to listen to what they've got to say. Now, some of the things that they've got to say will make you angry. And you're going to need to realize that every time you get angry, you're actually denying your grief. And it's only your grief that's going to heal you. So you need to bear that in mind, that every time you get angry, they're probably going to go away for a while, let you experience the anger, and then they'll probably come back after that when you're ready to grieve again. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Because they can't be around somebody getting angry with them all the time. Otherwise, lots of people would get angry with them because they're talking to the truth, about the truth to lots of people. All right, so if you can do that, then you'll be sorry for the pain you caused others and that's what real repentance is. When you just feel sorry for yourself for being in the situation you're in and getting caught, that's not true repentance. That I make, understand. That makes sense? Yes. That's good. So let, they want to talk to you now. and Thank they, you. Yeah. There is also a spirit called Juliet. Her question is, is there hope for my soulmate? She does such bad things on this earth. I want her to stop. How can I help her? So, Julia, when did you pass? Juliet. Juliet. Not long. Not long ago? How old were you when you passed? 27. Right, so your soulmate's quite young, right? Yes, yeah, she's 25. 25, okay. So you were 27 and it was a few years ago when you passed and she's 25. All right. What's her name? Do you know her name? You want to tell me? Angela. Her name? Angela, okay. Angelina. Angelina. Okay. And the issue you're facing is how do I help her? Yes. Okay. But firstly, what I'd like to do is ask you a few questions about where you are. Can we do that? Yes. Now, did you know that she was your soulmate before you passed? I felt her to be, but right. now I am sure. Right, okay. So, so when you passed, where, where do you find yourself? When, when you first passed, where did you find yourself? I'm not sure, but I'm not as dark as these others. So you weren't as dark as the lady who was there earlier, where we were talking to? That's correct. Yep. As dark as Mary, but, but you're not very bright either compared to these bright spirits that have come occasionally? No. No, okay. Um, the location you're in is in the f what's called the first sphere, but it's not as dark as what the other ladies were in. The, the location they were in was called the hills, so it's a bit different to where you're in. But um, you feel very, very focused on your soulmate, don't you? Yes. What, why is that? Because I love her. Yeah. And she's hurting herself. Yeah. And that hurts me. And you can see her hurting yourself, yes. herself. And what's she doing? She, d she drinks. She takes drugs. Yeah. She sleeps with men even though she doesn't want to. Yeah. She does many shameful things. Yeah. And does she sleep with men so that she can get the drugs? Or Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when you were alive on earth with her, did she do the same things then too? We partied a lot. Yeah. yeah. But not this much. Right. Do you feel she's missing you a bit too? No. I can see that she does it. Because she misses me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, one, of the, one of the things that is happening, and this is going to be quite difficult for you to face in a little bit, let's talk about the dynamics going on between you. and that, Let's say that's you and you're in a spirit body, right? And you've got your half of the soul, right? And then you've got your soulmate the, and she's in a... She's got a spirit, spirit body, right? And she's also got a material body. So let's just put that there as well. All right. So she's on earth, material body, physical body. 
She's on earth and you're in the spirit world. Now, when you feel lots of emotions of grief towards somebody, there's an automatic linkage that occurs between you and them where you don't let, you don't let them go. What happens is there, can you see the big trail that goes between you and her? There's a big emotional linkage and you see it as like a big energy beam. Yes. If you, could, you can see that? Yes. What colour is that? Pink. Yeah. And that's going from you to her. Can you see that? Yes. Now that, that energy linkage is actually about your emotions of grief that you feel towards her. You missing her. Yes. Right? And your worry for her and so forth. Now unfortunately she's going to receive that as a projection from you and feel very much a lot of her unhealed stuff is going to be linked to that. Do you follow me? And so, so this projection is not actually love, it's actually a need. And there's two different things between love and the need. When you project a need to somebody, oftentimes they'll stay hooked into that grief that you feel for many, many years. Now, have you noticed other people who have died on, in the spirit world who have passed, you notice how often they've got the same thing coming from people on earth? You notice that? There's yes. this energy sort of line coming from people on earth. And you can see whenever, whenever they go to do something, they feel drawn back to the earth, don't they? You notice that, how that's happening? Yes, so you've observed that. Yep, so you've observed that. So, so the issue, one of the issues you're facing yourself is that you're not yet in a state of truly loving your soulmate. You're in a state of missing your soulmate a lot. And that's actually exacerbating or making worse her feelings of grief about the loss of you. Do you understand? Are you saying I cause her to do these things? No, no. I'm not saying you cause it. I'm, I'm telling you how you can help it stop. Okay. Right? Her deciding to drink and take drugs and sleeping around is to do with her way of dealing with her grief. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm not saying you're responsible for her choices here. What I'm saying, though, is that this emotion that comes from you does cause her pain to increase. And then that causes her to make decisions that are sometimes unwise for her in her, in her pain. How do I stop causing her more pain? Well, it's really simple. You've got to start allowing yourself, at the moment, you, you, what is your connection, con conception of God at the moment? Do you believe there's a God at all? You yeah, can be, I guess. I don't really have a conception. Yeah, you haven't really thought about it before? Not really. No. And uh, you don't notice anybody around you who's really got any conception of God either? No. I see flashes of light real quick sometimes. Yeah. But they move too fast. I don't know who they are. Yeah. They're actually spirits who are, are in a brighter condition and a more happy condition than yourself. Would you like one of them to stop with you? So sure. Ra rather than flash by you, we'll get them to stop. Shall we do that? Sure. Sure. Okay. So let's, let's do that. Can you see them now? Wow. They're really bright. Yeah. Yeah. Why are they so bright? Well, they're bright. The brightness in the spirit world is about love and truth. The more love and truth you have inside of you, the brighter your body is. Does that make sense? I don't have much love and truth. Okay. So you can easily see the difference, can't you, between the two in compare. Now, the key with any comparison that you make is to compare just from a scientific point of view rather than from an emotional point of view. In other words, don't go down the track now feeling ashamed and terrible and bad because you're not as bright as they are. But just understand that they're brighter than you because they know more about truth than you do and they know more about love than you do. Does that make sense? Yes. So that also means that you can learn from them, doesn't it? You can learn something from these, from these people. Yes, definitely. Right? So we'll get them to introduce themselves to you. Monique and Marsha. Now, what do you notice about them? They're telling you a bit about their life. They're a couple. Yeah. And they're a soulmate couple, yes? Yes. Okay. And the two, two girls, right? Yes. Just like you with, with your girl. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, can they show you what was like before they passed, what their lives were like? They were bad. Yeah. Okay. Did a lot of things that your girl was doing, hey? Yes. Hmm. Okay. And how long ago did they pass? 50 years. Okay. So, so in 50 years they've gotten from where you are or even from worse than where you are to where they are now, which is a pretty bright place, isn't it? Yes. You see that? They're looking pretty good? Yes. Look pretty beautiful, don't they? Very. Yeah. Okay. So that means that you are able to progress and so is your soulmate. And I think one of them passed before the other, didn't they? Marsha passed first. Mm -hmm. And how long before was it that the other passed? 25 years. Okay. Long time. So quite some time, right? And she was pretty concerned too about what the other one was doing, right? Yes. Yeah. It was painful for her, she said. To watch, yeah. Yep. So she has been in your position. Does that make sense? Yes. So she really can help you a lot here. So, so really what I'm going to tell you is nothing compared to what they can tell you. Because they, they've been through what you're going through. Okay. Right? So they, there's, they've got a lot to tell you and there's a lot for you to listen to. But if I can just suggest to you one thing, and that is their progression has been very dependent upon their connection with God. And what they're going to do is talk to you about how to actually connect to God and how that actually relieves you of certain emotions that stop you from projecting damaging things at your soulmate. And ironically, because of that, your soulmate may feel drawn into a different place. Right? Because that of that. That is good. And the more one half of the soul progresses towards God, the more the other half of the soul is, is actually impacted by that progression. So the other half of the soul feels drawn along with the first half. So if I learn to be bright like them, she will not necessarily want to do these things. That's right. She, she will, firstly, she will no longer feel this needy projection from you that causes a lot of her grief. So that will relieve her quite a lot. But then after that, she may feel drawn into following certain things that eventually get her to stop doing these things. Because you, you know that she's doing these things because she's avoiding her grief, isn't she? Yes. You know she's doing that. You can see she's doing that. Yeah. And that's why she's doing all of these things without really knowing what she's doing. Because she's just trying to get away from this emotion. When you relieve yourself of those grieving emotions and you get closer to God, you can have a far more positive influence upon her than you can in your current condition. Because in your current condition, what you're doing is making her grief even larger. I don't want to do that. And what that does is actually cause her to feel more drawn to this behaviour. I definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. Now, you may not be able to stop this behaviour because she has free will. But by you growing... Whenever she does finish up passing, or even before then, she will start to feel the effects of your growth. So as you grow in love and in truth, and you become brighter like the couple that are with you are bright, you will actually find yourself feeling less and less projection of emotions to your soulmate, and she will feel that less and then feel drawn to even find the same path you've found. This is very good. Yeah, and, that, and through that process you'll be able to help her. But you're not going to help her just sitting on her shoulder like you do a lot of the time, trying to yell in her ear. Yes, I do. Yeah, and, and what's happening when you're trying to yell in her ear is you've got five or ten other spirits around you all yelling at her at the same time, yes. aren't they? Yes, they do. Yeah, and all telling her to do all different things and there's some yucky man spirits with her telling her to do certain things and there's... Terrible women spirits telling her to do some things yes, as well. Yes, I can't get rid of them either. Okay. And if you don't understand what's going on, how can you help all of this? But what's, hap what's happening is when you progress through this method, you'll understand why all these attractions are actually occurring and you'll be able to help her a lot to get rid of those attractions. And some of those attractions are causing her to go to these things, aren't they? You know, some of those spirits are causing her to drink. Yes. Some of those spirits are causing her to get drunk. Uh, uh, to take drugs and some of them are even setting up liaisons for her aren't they yes they are bad they're very sleazy sleazy spirits aren't they 
Yes. And they're causing her to do lots of things she possibly wouldn't normally do. Now, all you, once you work your way through a lot of things, you will help her focus on this grief. And when she focuses on that grief, a lot of these other spirits won't be able to influence her at all. This is such good news. Yeah. So if you have a listen to the couple of spirits who are with you at the moment, the soulmate couple that are with you, they'll be able to tell you lots of things that I can't tell you in the time that it takes for them to tell you. I will go with them. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. It's my pleasure. There is um, one last spirit. Her name is Georgia. Georgia, yeah. Uh, and she just says, how can I be forgiven? Georgia, what do you need to be forgiven for? So much. Do you mind telling me? My children, the abuse I've caused to them. So did you actually abuse them or did you allow abuse to occur to them? I would yell and smack them. But I allowed a man to hurt them. Right. Yeah. When you say allow a man to hurt them, you allowed a man to sexually abuse them? Yes. Yeah. And you knew that he was? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is that the thing you feel that you need to be forgiven for? Or is there more? That is what I want to be forgiven for. Okay. Okay. Did you hear the recent discussion that I had with the man who was the murderer who would talked about repentance? Yes, I wondered if that applied to me. And that does apply to you, yes. But if I can explain a little more than what I explained to him for you. With regard to any action we take when we're on earth, there's always a reason. So if we look at the reason why you firstly physically hurt your children but secondly allowed them to be sexually abused, right? So let's look at the reason, the real reason. What do you feel the real reason is inside of you for that? My daughters were more beautiful than me. Okay, so the daughters, so you were jealous of your daughters? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other reason, do you think? <laughs> My disgust that he desired them so much more than me. Right, so so the man desired the man you were with desired your daughters more than he desired you? Yes. Yeah. And how how did that feel besides disgust? There's another emotion in there. Anger. That made me very angry. Right. And it made you sometimes angry with your daughters? Yes. And sometimes angry with the man? Yes. Because you wanted the man to desire you? I wanted him to love me. Yeah, so, so if you look at the real emotion, you wanted a man's love, didn't you? Yes. Can you see that? Yeah. And when the man gave, let's call it love in quotations because it's not really love, when the man gave love in quotations to your daughters, you then felt angry with your daughters because they were getting something that you wanted for yourself. I wanted to hurt them and scar them yeah. so that he would not see them as beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I did. You did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what we want to do is instead of, instead of having all this judgment about what you've done, because it's so tempting to do that, how long ago did all this happen? Can you mind me asking? Five hundred years. Okay. So for the last five hundred years you've been feeling the pain of this, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. When you first passed you were quite angry and in a rage? Yes. And you've worked through lots of jealous emotions, haven't you, then? And you've had quite I a lot of... I see the pain I have caused. Yeah. Now you're in a much more ready place, aren't you, to see what's going on. Yes. All right. Well, what I said to the man who was the murderer is exactly the same things to apply to you. So you remember all of that? You remember that? I must talk to God about my being sorry. That's right, spot on. And remember, 
Remember that everything covers over different emotions and right down the bottom is the emotion of grief, right? So you have a lot of grief associated with your dad. Remember your dad never really loved you, did he? You never felt love from your dad. Can you see that? Yes. Yep. And actually it was your unwillingness to feel the grief about your desire for daddy's love that caused you to be jealous of your own daughters. Because <laughs> any woman became competition for you, didn't they, for a man's love? Yes. You know that? So, so when you allow yourself to experience this grief that you have of, of the loss of daddy's love and the fact that you weren't loved by dad, that will help you a lot to actually deal with a lot of the causal emotion that's inside of you that's causing you to remain dark. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, would you like a helper to come along and help you through this? Like, yes, please. Yeah. Well, let's ask one of our spirit friends to do that. You see the lady who's appeared now? She's right? here. Yep. And what's her name? Jordan. Yeah. And how long ago did she pass? You should tell me that. Two hundred years. Yeah. And you can see how she's had a very similar life to you, where she was very jealous? Yes. Yeah. And very similar things she did to her children as a result of her jealousy. She killed one. Yeah. And murdered one. Can you see that she's bright now though? Yes. So somehow she's got through all of this and worked her way through it all. Can you see that? Yes. Yep. Well, what she's going to do is explain to you what she had to work through because what she had to work through is very, very similar to what you have to work through. But can I just point out one thing before you go and talk with her? And that is you are going to need to experience this grief that you've always tried to avoid. This grief that a man doesn't love you. Does that make sense? And instead of, instead of getting angry about it and resentful and hateful about it, you're going to need to just cry about it. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah. Because if you don't do that, what will happen is you'll keep getting into your anger all the time. So this anger is like a capping emotion. And the anger is what caused you to do these harmful things, didn't it? Yes. You got so angry and so much in a rage that eventually you hurt your own children as a result of it. Yeah. yeah. So w what we want to do is get to the cause of that, which is the grief that you didn't want to feel because daddy hurt you quite a lot, right? Yeah. Every day. Every day, yeah. yeah. And that happened all your life, didn't it? Yes. To, to you married. Yeah. To you with this other man. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of grief there to feel about that. Does that make sense? And this, this lady who's come to visit you, Jordan, she, she will be able to help you through that because she's been through that. Thank you. That's my pleasure. You'll be able to do that. Thanks, Natalie. Good, some good triggers there for you, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Okay, who else would like to... Shannon, you want to have a go? Yeah, that's good. Shannon's quite shy, so uh -huh. I was waiting for her to put her hand up. <laughs> Did you know someone was with me? <laughs> <laughs> Far away, Shannon. Um, just a minute. Okay. Um, I have a lady named Erica with me. Erica? Was Erica. That? Erica, yep. And... She passed away about two years ago. Yep. And she left her son. And when you say she left her son, does that she left her son of five years old here on earth? Yeah. After she due to the passing, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So her son, who's five years old, so he's now seven. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And she's very concerned about him. She she spends a lot of her time around him mm -hmm. and 
she's very, very angry with who, who his caregivers are at right. the moment because they're not... So she was a single mum? Yes. Yep. And who did she leave? In a, in, did she leave it with a couple or somebody she thought she could trust when she was on earth? Um, she, she passed away in a car accident. Yep. And she left her son and he has been tossed around th from all, all family members, from the father to the grandmother to the, to the sister-in-law. Right. And now he's living with the sister-in-law and she's... She's got a lot of... She, Erica has a lot of anger towards men at the moment. Mm -hmm. And what's the cause of the anger towards men? That she's never had attention from men. Yeah. And they don't listen to her. This is what's coming through. So no attention from men? Yeah. When you say attention, she means like somebody who cares no about her, love of her. Yep. She's she had a relationship with a woman before she passed. Yeah, but she realizes the woman isn't her soulmate. Yes. She realizes that a man's her soulmate. Yes. Mm. Yep. Okay. And what was the other thing she mentioned? Sorry, I just can't feel it from her again. So there's no attention from men and. Can't get that. Okay. Um, is it a bit of a surprise that I said to her that her 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 soulmate's not a woman? Yes. Yeah. Is that what's caused her to shut down a little now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does she? She's aware of who her soulmate actually is. is no. It? No. She's okay. been she's been too attached to the earth. Okay. Yep. All right. So so. Because of her anger with men, she eventually even got into a relationship with a woman. Yes. Mm. And and obviously felt she was in love with the woman, but yes. But in reality, can see now that a lot of it was motivated by her anger with men. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, this is something that happens quite a lot with uh, intergender relationships. Quite often, we have homosexual men who have female relationships. We have homosexual women ha who have male relationships we have and we also have heterosexual men and women who have relationships with the same gender in other words a male with a male or female with a female because of their unhealed emotion regarding that opposite gender that is their real soulmate gender so that often happens all right so so why did she want to talk with us so she's um because she's she feels that she's very, she's very bound to her son here on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's still very angry with the caregivers that, with how they're treating her son, and she she feels that they're not doing the job that she could be doing mm -hmm. with here on earth still. Yep. Now there's some really hard truths that I'm going to point out to her though. Is she okay with that? She can see that I'm not feeling judgment towards her, but I need to point out some things that she, she hasn't She wants the about. truth. Okay. Well, um, firstly, can she see that because of the anger with men that she has, that her son growing up with her actually caused her son to receive a lot of that anger that she has with men? She can't see that. She can't see that at all. Okay, well, let's... She, can, can she, she needs to have that explained to her a little bit more. Well, what I'd like to do, instead of explaining it to her, can she see the colours of the anger with men that she has inside of her? Yes. And when she sees that colour coming out of her, can she see where it goes? It's, it's projected out onto her. Who's it going to primarily? There's a man to the father of the child. Right. So there's a man it's going to primarily at the moment, right? Yeah. Can she see that? Yes. That, that anger emotion, she wants that man to feel her anger, doesn't she? Yes. She can feel that? Yes. She wants to punish that man. Uh, yeah, I feel I want to punish him. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so she can see that really strong, terrible coloured red and black type emotions. And brown and yes. Yeah, coming out of her straight into this 
and it's entering the man, right? Yes. Can she see where else the colour is going? Because there's other little, there's less colour, but of but of the same colour going to other men around her. Can you see where that's going? She feels that there's anger going towards her son as well. Mm. So can she see how, because she's angry with men inside of her, that some of this stuff that she's projecting at the men actually doesn't just all fall on men that she thinks that she hates, but rather it also falls on a lot of men she thinks she loves. Can she see that? Yes. Right. And can she see how that means then if her son was living with her on earth that her son would also be receiving this emotion from her? Yes. Now, if she goes now and just has a look at her son, so let's, and what we'll do is I'll just say before she goes and has a look, she can go and have a look and then come back quite rapidly. But what I would like to do is can she see the effect that's had on her son and his relationship with women? Yes. What's the effect? He doesn't. She she's feeling upset. Yeah, so she's just, really she upset. wants to cry. Yeah. She's been watching this. Can she see how how it's entering her son, and even damaging little bits of his body, and now, and now he's with his interaction with girls and women. You can see what's happening. In his interaction with girls and women, he he feels that all women leave him, yep. and that they don't want they don't want him. Yeah, and this anger coming from her is actually helping him feel that even stronger. It's actually helping him feel this feeling of that he's not wanted. Can she see that? So one of the first things that needs to happen is that instead of getting angry with how the people on earth are treating her son. She first needs to deal with how she's treating her son. Does that make sense? How do I get away from being so attached to the earth? Um, you're attached to the earth for a lot of different reasons. But the, there's two primary reasons. One is that you're very, very angry with men and you spend a lot of your time on the earth projecting that anger at men who you feel deserve it. Don't you? Yes. You see that? Yes. The other reason why you're very attracted to the earth is because you're worried about your son and how he's being treated. So there's two things that's causing your attraction to the earth. Yes. Now there's some spirits around you who have tried to talk to you about these issues, aren't there? Yes, there's been spirits that have I have asked and I am finding hard to believe. You don't want to hear their answers, do you? No. No. And why don't you want to hear their answers? Because of my pain yeah. and because of what because of what I've left behind. Yeah. Now the it's truth the truth is that you can be with people on earth in a loving way. But at the moment the majority of your interactions with people on earth are very unloving in that you're projecting a lot of rage and anger to these people on earth and even some of that is going towards your son, right? Yes. And then on top of that, you're very upset with the people looking after your son so there's a lot of rage and anger going towards those people too. And this is what's causing you to stay on earth. You are avoiding your own grief about these matters. Do, do you follow me now? So what, what happens is here's some grief that you have about firstly about men and secondly about how your son's being treated. Ironically, your son's being treated badly partly because of your attitude towards men. But you've got some grief about men. Then on top of this grief about men, you have is a large fear about feeling this grief, right? You're very afraid about how much sorrow there is inside of you about men. And you don't want to feel that sorrow you instead want to blame the men and get them to feel the sorrow. And of course they're not doing that, are they? No. no they're just doing more damage. Right? So the man you were with that, that where, where, from whom your son was born, right? he's not a very nice fellow now that you see him, is he? Very damaged. Yeah. And, and he's still damaging men, women, isn't he? Terribly. Yeah. 
And you're really angry about that. Terribly angry. Okay. So what's happening is on top of the fear of dealing with your own grief, there's this really big rage inside of you, right? Now, while you choose to avoid your grief about men, which is actually not even connected to this man that you're angry with, neither is it connected to your son, it's actually connected to your dad. Can you see that? Yes. And can you see how that's one of the reasons why you're attracted to Shannon too? That you can see that she's got some similar emotions in her? Yes. Okay. So, so you can see that what you're doing is in actually fa actual fact avoiding your grief about men. You're very afraid to feel it. And in fact, not only just afraid to feel it, but you actually feel that you shouldn't have to feel it. You feel that they should have to feel it all. I do. Hmm. But let me put to you one thing, and that is that there's an emotion inside of you. How can anyone else feel the emotion that's inside of you? Have you ever seen that happen since you've been in the spirit world? Another person feel your emotions exactly as you feel them? Can you see sometimes they do, but they've had similar emotions than you have had. They're feeling their own emotions, aren't they? Yes. Have you ever been able to release any of your emotion by making someone else feel it for you? No. Okay. So what I'm saying to you is you're not going, no matter how much rage and anger and everything else you project at these men, and by the way, the real issue is not these men but rather your dad, and no matter how much rage and anger and everything that you have even with your dad, right? you are not going to be able to make them feel your grief. Because the grief is inside of you and only you can feel it. There's a lot there. Yeah. Now the only way for this matter to improve for you is for you to begin feeling your own grief. Does that make sense? Now if you choose to not feel your own grief, you're going to stay in this state of anger and blame. You're going to still be projecting out to all of these men and one of these men is going to be your little son. And he is going to continue to receive damage from you, even from the spirit world. And he's going to continue to feel like no woman is ever going to love him all of his life. What he needs from you is a mother's love, a real love. Not, not this damaging emotion or caring type emotion or he's my son type emotion. But a real love. And that's only going to come when you can feel your grief about how men have treated you. Can you see the relationship there? Yes. Now what we'd like to do is ask, that, ask some spirits to come and help you do that. Is that okay? Yes, please. Yeah. And this time, can you trust them a little more? Yes, I've been wanting to come. Yeah. I've been wanting to come to you. Yeah. And if you can trust these spirits a little more, they'll be able to show you really easily how to get through these emotions. They're going to be some tough emotions, but you'll get through them quite rapidly if you let yourself feel them. At the moment you're staying in this place of anger and that's not letting yourself feel any of this. Yeah? And what will happen is you'll release this anger that you feel towards the man, you'll release the anger towards you feel towards your dad, you'll feel some grief and y you know you're going to grow to a nice new place in the spirit world that's much happier than where you are now. And in that place you'll be able to love your son even more and you'll also know what to do in order to help him have a situation and an environment that's to his benefit. But at the moment, your own emotions are contributing to his negative environment. I hear you. Yeah. Okay. So what if they can talk to you about a lot of that and they can also show you how to help your son properly? All right. She wants to go. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Erica. What's the time, by the way? 5.30, yep. Okay, we've probably got time for one more or so. Um, can we go up to, up the back there? Is it more than, is it? Yeah. Hi, AJ. I've got a... Um a young man that was just killed 
very recently. Yes, how long ago? Well, just uh, two to three weeks ago. Two to three weeks ago. It was a car accident or...? Yep. Yeah. Um, and he's very confused about why his head is so damaged. Yep. Um, he still looks like he's been in the accident. Yeah. Yep. And um, he's someone that my sons knew. Oh, okay. Yep. So what's his name? Sam. Sam. Yep. Yeah. How old was he when he passed? I'd say uh, he's saying 23. 23, yep. Yeah. Um, now, Sam's okay with hearing what I've got to say. He's, he's fine. He can hear yes, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, well, Sam, the, the first issue when you pass is that a lot of your body retains its, its form until you realise some things. So one of the things that's happened in your car accident is you got damaged and you got a lot of head injuries in your car accident. And there's still a feeling in you that you still have those injuries. Right? The truth is actually that you don't. Now let me just say that again, but this time what we'll do is we'll get someone to give you a mirror. And what we'll do is we'll get you to look at the mirror and you can see your damage that you've currently got right in the mirror. And then... I want you to close your eyes for a moment and just imagine yourself without those injuries, before you had those injuries. Can you do that? Yeah. Close yes. your eyes. Now open your eyes and look in the mirror. What do you see? He looks the way he did before. Yep. Yeah. Now how did that happen? I think he's a little confused. Yeah. He's That's pretty he's spacey, eh? Yeah. He's yeah. yeah. It's pretty amazing. No one ever told him that on earth, eh? No. 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 Okay. Let me explain what's happening. Inside of the soul, and you are now connected to what is called your spirit body, and there's a connection between your spirit body and your soul. And you're the masculine part of your soul. And then you've got your soul mate somewhere else, right? But that's your half of the soul. So your half of the soul is connected to your body. Right? Now, the emotions in your soul determine how your body looks. And if you imagine yourself to look a certain way, a lot of times you will look that way until you stop the imagination occurring. Now, when I said to you, imagine that you now don't have that form, what happened was you, you then thought you were imagining not having the form, but in reality, I was actually getting you to picture your real condition right now. And what was happening was the residual memory of the event caused you to retain an imagination of your, of your body that wasn't a true perspective of it. And this can happen very, very frequently in the spirit world. So there's many, many people who pass in the spirit world who still imagine themselves to have cancer, who still imagine themselves to be burnt in a fire, who still imagine themselves to have died in a car accident and have this injury, who still imagine themselves to be hit by a sword or a spear if they've been in a war or a bullet or whatever. And they still imagine their bodies to look exactly the same, right? And until you get them to close their eyes and imagine themselves back to just before they were passed, they won't see the reality. And the reality is their spirit body doesn't have to look that way. So that's number one. So he gets that? Yes, but I, what he's saying to me is that he's feeling a lot of the ugliness in his yes. soul. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that caused him to retain this image in his body that wasn't real. Do you see what I'm saying? Now what he's seeing in his body is the real thing. So if he looks down at his body, can he see that there's different cracks and fissures in his body that he didn't have when he was on earth? Yep. And can you see that he has quite a lot in the lower parts of his body? Yep. And he also has some through, through his heart. Yes, yep. around his heart. Yep. So, so he can see all of those. Now they are the reality of his soul condition. If he just imagines himself not having that for a moment right now, just pictures that, so stands in front of the mirror and just pictures him not having it, and when he opens his eyes, what does he still see there? All the cracks. They're all, all still there, aren't they? Yeah. 
So, yes. so he can see that that is the reality of his condition. Does that make yes. sense? Yes. So many spirits pass over and they imagine themselves to be in a totally different condition than they really are. By the way, this happens to all the ways on earth. Many of us imagine ourselves to be in a better or worse condition than we really are, right? And in the spirit world it's so easy to do. But there's an easy way to test it and that is just to close your eyes, look in a mirror to imagine it to be different. And if it doesn't change, then it's real. And if it does change, then whatever was there before was not real. Does that make sense? So, so what I'm suggesting to him now is that these little cracks and fissures that he's got in his body, <coughs> and he notice that his body is a certain brightness too. See, it, it gives off a certain light. Yes, but it's not really bright. No, it's, it's very quite dark. Quite a dull, yeah. dark. Is it is it as dark as most people here, or a bit darker, or what's he finding? Quite a bit darker. Right, quite yeah. a bit darker than even most people here. Right. Now, what that does is one thing he needs to understand about the spirit world is this soul is the true condition of the person and the soul through its energy lights up the body and controls how the body reacts and demonstrates the true condition of the body. So the body demonstrates the true condition of the soul. Does that make sense to him? Yes. Right. Yes. So then the question becomes how do I fix my soul? So does he want to know about how to do that? Yes, he's very frightened yep. um, and I'm feeling quite dazed so I think he's feeling very hazy, very... Yeah, what's uh, happening is that this is a lot of information for him. See, see, on earth most young people have never even conceived of anything spiritually. They've not investigated anything. Most, most people on, on, on earth in Australia now have not had hardly any spiritual background whatsoever by the time they're in the 20s. They've not really been interested in religion in any way. They're not interested in God in any way. They've not had much experience emotionally with regard to a lot of things. And they're not have mu they don't have much idea that there's even an afterlife. In fact, the majority of them feel very definitely there is none. Yes, that's which, exactly which has how been his he condition. Felt. He had no faith. None whatsoever, in right? And now that he's dead, he realizes he's still alive. So that's a shock in itself, right? And then on top of that, me just getting to look in the mirror changed how he looked. That's a shock in itself too, isn't it? Right? So you imagine by now, all of a sudden, and I understand his confusion. All of a sudden, like I'm being bombarded with new truths here, mm. one after the other after the other, that is so difficult to understand. Yeah. He's, I'm feeling quite churned in my stomach yep. and I think it's because he's having difficulty digesting what you're saying. All right. So yep. what's probably the best thing to do at this stage is to not say too much more but instead what we'll do is we'll get a helper to come to him who will be able to help him when he's ready to be helped a bit more. How does that sound? Yeah. And that, that will be better for him. Otherwise I'll explain a heap of things that will go in one ear and out the other as the saying here goes here on earth even though we don't necessarily have the same hearing in the spirit world. And, and what will happen is that in the end it, it just deepens the confusion and, and the fear. And I don't want to do that. So, so what we'll do is we'll ask the brighter spirit to come who's actually died in a car accident too. Right. And uh, is that spirit on the natural love or divine love path? Can we just ask? I just got natural yep. love. Huh? And and why has that spirit come? Because he's not ready for the divine love path. Right. Yeah. Now, um, I f personally feel that every single person is ready for the divine love path, mm -hmm. but the spirit actually who's come feels that the man is not ready for the divine love path. So um, that's something that needs to be addressed as well. And so my suggestion is you know this man from, your, from a friend of your children. So, so my suggestion is continue to talk to him about the divine love path when you get the opportunity. Does that I make think sense? I feel he is drawn to it because I, I felt him yep. come to me a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And unfortunately what happens a lot in the spirit world is there's spirits on the natural love path who think they're helping a person who don't know about the divine love path but they're very drawn to come and to help the person thinking that they're helping the person when in reality they themselves hasn't learnt enough to help somebody yet. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I, th I think also, AJ, he doesn't feel he deserves that kind of help. And the truth He's, is he does. He does. 
does. He yeah, does. But he has a lot of shame. Yeah, and he doesn't. I know he feels bad about a lot of the things now he's done on Earth, and that's very quick, really. That and he's he feels pretty bad about girls actually. Uh, yeah. yeah. So he knows that there will be some emotions to work through there. But the truth is that God loves him just like God loves anyone else. And he can talk to God and connect to God and actually progress on the divine love path and progress very much more rapidly than the spirit who's on the natural love path is going to show him. It's really just in the end his choice. Yeah. Yeah. I feel he's even made just a slight little bit of a shift just, just by in this last minute or yeah, so. And just yeah. by having a bit of that grief. Yeah. Yeah. Just acknowledging even that he has treated women not so good. Um helps doesn't it yeah and he's also been a bit of a drinker occasionally a very big drug abuser yep. to my yeah he's saying yes i abuse my body a lot yeah yeah <laughs> yeah with so, drugs and alcohol so you have a few a lot of emotions of unworthiness to work through because that's always the cause of us abusing ourselves does that make sense so so my suggestion now is we'll ask another spirit to come who is on the divine love path so let's do that thank you just get it in. Yeah, just get it in yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, one other thing too, I'd just like to talk to the spirit who's on the natural love path. You okay with doing that? Sorry. I'd like to talk to the spirit who came in who wanted to help him on the natural love path. Okay. Yeah. Can Can you see that these other spirits who have just came in are brighter than you? Yes. Okay. Do you understand that the brightness is a demonstration of how much truth and love they have in their soul? Yes. I'm okay. So, so can you see there must be things for you to learn from these spirits as well as this man who you, you thought you'd be able to help? Yeah, I'm beginning to think so. Can you see that? Yeah. Now, one of the reasons why you're on the natural love path is because you don't really believe there's a God yet, do you? No, I haven't. No. I haven't trusted that. Yeah. And these spirits who are brighter do believe there's a God. So my suggestion is have a listen to them as well as when, he's talk when they're talking to your, your friend you're trying to help, if you could have a listen to them as well. Yeah. And by the way, it's your law of attraction that you're here with us while we're talking about both of these things. I understand that. As you yeah. know. Yeah, so, absolutely, AJ. Yeah, good eye. Thank you. Thank you. And um, one thing to bear in mind with spirit interaction and your communication with them is any judgment you have towards anything that they have done in their life will actually cause them to feel your judgment and therefore cause them to shut down in their interaction with you. And one of the reasons why the spirits are very open towards myself is because I don't have judgment about what they've done. Many of you, when something was said about what they've done, you had this feeling of, oh, you didn't feel that feeling that was there in you? Could you feel that? There's something in that that causes you then to get into a place of judgment of the person. Now, a spirit who's being judged is going to feel the judgment and, and also it's going to be very difficult for you then to help them. Does that make sense? Naturally so. When you think about it, if you start opening your mouth to somebody and telling them about your life and all you're getting back is judgment, how are you going with your emotion in that state? Like, it's so hard, isn't it, in that state for you to move beyond that point. So it's the same with these spirits. So my suggestion is whenever you feel that emotion pass through you of something going on here, like when that lady said that she actually, hurt, she actually mutilated her daughters, right, even though she knew her daughters were being abused sexually by her partner, she mutilated her daughters out of jealousy. Now, how do you feel about that? You see, if you feel a feeling of judgment, right, it's going to be very hard for you to help a person like that. Does that make sense? And, and as soon, but as soon as you, f if you can feel love for the person and understand the background that caused this, and, and the background that caused it was that from a very, very young age, she was tortured and sexually abused by her father. Right? So that's what created this terrible love-hate relationship with men. She wanted a man to love her, but 
you know, it was all to do with sexual abuse really in the end and then was very jealous with any woman who took a man's attention away from her. This is a common thing that happens with sexual abuse. How can you help anybody with sexual abuse if you have judgment towards that particular thing? Can you see what I'm saying? So allow ourselves, the beauty of interacting with spirits like this is we can help spirits progress very rapidly as long as we are open emotionally and sensitive to their underlying emotional causal reasons why they do things and have some understanding and compassion and love for that. As soon as we get into judgment for it, what we're actually doing now is pr still trying to punish them for their act or their acts, right? No matter how evil they became, there was always a reason. And if we don't understand that and we don't feel for that, then we can't have love for them and we can't help them. There are many, many spirits in the spirit world who have been there thousands of years who are, who are continually receiving our judgment and that's one of the reasons why they can't even be honest about what they've done. Right? And so we need to allow ourselves to work our way through why we judge and work our through way through that emotion. And as we do that, what will happen is these spirits will feel more drawn to talk to us freely and openly so that we can actually assist them. So if you can bear that in mind, if you're one of these people, I know there's quite a number in the audience who would love to help spirits a lot more. If you can bear in mind that it's your emotional state of judgment that, de that determines how much help you can bring, give to somebody on earth or in the spirit world for that matter. Yeah. Anyway, is there any questions about that, what we just went through? Um, I have a few questions. Robin and then up the back. Yeah. We come down the front of you first. Uh, and then up the back. Go. I was just wondering, um, with the people that we just worked with in spirit, um, the, the, the fathers, in, every, in virtually every case, the fathers of the spirits that were was speaking were involved in, you know, sort of the ongoing lineage of those, of those deeds. W were those spirits around? Was there any sensing that they were involved or...? Uh Robin, it's so interesting that you see the fa thought the fathers were there. Because actually, the fathers and mothers were just as liable for their behaviour. Right. So there's something there to look at for yourself in terms of just feeling the fathers not being around. Their mothers weren't either. All right. It's just, oh, it's just that in every case you mentioned it was the father um, in, the, um, in the links. Yeah, well, I, I only pointed out a few of their emotions that were right there on the surface. The truth is every one of them had just as deep emotions to work through with their mothers, but the father emotion was the one holding them in a state of stagnation. So in other words, it was their rage towards the masculine that was holding them in a state of stagnation in many cases. Does that make sense? Yeah. But that what they're not realising is that many of them have even more rage with their mother than they do with their father, but they'll go through that emotionally as time progresses. Yeah. And, and would those parents, or go, I'll, I'll use the word parents now, yep, yep. were they there? Were they around? Could um, you feel? No, no. Those parents are in darker conditions and not even drawn to come to a group like this. Yep, so, so they are in the hells of the spirit world in a very dark condition and not even in a place of self-reflection at this point. The, the, the man who damaged his daughter with sexual abuse is still on the earth connecting with men who sexually abuse women, girls, little girls, right? So he, he's not in a place where he will even begin to look at his emotion for some time yet. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately that's what happens a lot, is that many of these abusers who pass um, connect with other people on earth who have the same emotions and through them continue to abuse in the same manner in which they did before they passed. Yeah. One more thing. Can you, I don't know how to express this, can you judge the crime and not the perpetrator? Because, I mean, I think quite a few of us were teary in some of those cases because we were feeling for the, for the, for the little girls or for the people, for the soldier with the spear through his chest um, who may have been killed by that, by that um, first man. Yeah. Um, is it possible to, to, to sort of feel judgment of the uh, and sort of sickened by the act but not towards the perpetrator? Um, 
sickened by the act is always driven by an unhealed emotion within yourself. You will get to a point of compassion for all acts uh, that are perpetrated. You won't agree with them and you'll see them as the result of evil emotions within the person. The, pro the problem isn't the act. The problem is the emotion that drives the act. You see, on the earth, we're happy as long as somebody doesn't act. Well, God's laws don't talk about and don't even deal with actions. Do you know what they deal with? They all deal with emotions. So, so the truth is we need to start getting away from the act and start looking at the emotion that caused the act. Does that make sense? When we start examining the emotion that caused the act, we start understanding. Before that time, it's very, very difficult to have any understanding because all we feel is sickened by the act. Not understanding that any of us with a certain set of emotional conditions, with a certain set of situations with a certain set of suppression may in fact finish up doing one of those acts that we ourselves feel sickened about and many of these people now feel sickened about what they did and if we focus on the act and as soon as you focus on the act you're getting away from them focusing on the emotion you see every time you just felt sick about what they said straight away you took them away from feeling their emotion about why they did what they did does that make sense to everyone? So, so while we may feel very justified in feeling like sickened by the act or whatever, in the end, most of the time, that is driven by the emotion inside of ourselves that we're avoiding. And, 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 and the emotion is, you know, sometimes fear about that act or sadness about that act or whatever. And what we're doing is we're driven, driven by that emotion. And that causes then this automatic judgment to occur on the person. Even the feeling of being sickened by the act causes the person to avoid their causal emotion. So if you came to me and you told me you had five abortions, right, and I felt sickened by that, would you have continued discussing with me about what happened with these abortions? Can you see? You probably wouldn't have. You would have felt my disgust and my sickness about the act and felt like I'm not the person you could talk to about that particular thing and what was underneath it. Can you see that? And the same applies to these people. Every single person on this planet and every single person in the spirit world that's ever done anything harmful needs to have understanding before they're going to change. And the only way they're going to get understanding is for us to get out of the state where we judge the act and start looking at the emotion that drove the act. And when I'm in that state where I don't judge the act anymore and I'm looking at the emotion that drove the act, now the person will be able to speak to me about the emotion that drove their act that they themselves are ashamed of. They don't need, need me projecting more at them because they're already in a state where they've seen the damage of the act. But they don't understand why they did it. And that's, that's, the, that's the hard part. And that's the part that most people are totally stuck on for hundreds if not thousands of years. They don't understand why. And what we need to do is have the compassion to, to actually see the act as actually the evidence of the emotion and look at the emotion instead. Does that make sense, Robin? A bit of personal things in there for you that I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, um, who, me? oh, yeah. Hello. Um, because yesterday I was sharing that about coming from Germany and um, being connected to the Nazis. Nazis, yeah. And very shortly my grandfather came. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's quite a very delicate uh, delicate issue, or I don't know how to say that. Yep. And I I, I shared I would love to help. So yep. it was just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the way to help is firstly to not have judgment for your exactly. grandfather. I that's just that's number that. one, right? Yeah. As soon as you have judgment for your grandfather, yeah. he is not going to be able to bear yeah. his heart to you. Yeah. Yeah. When he bears his heart to you, some of the things that are in his heart are going to feel to you really bad. Mm. So he might be in a rage with Jews or he might be mm. in a rage with Hitler and he may be in a rage mm. with this person, a rage with you know, that person. And he might have all this different emotion in him mm. that you will feel very tempted to judge if mm. you have any judgments at all going mm. on in yourself about those emotions. Mm. The key is to get underneath that with him and help him get to the underlying 
grieving type emotions mm -hmm. and help him to understand how to grieve through mm -hmm. this because it's mm -hmm. the grief that is the healing emotion. Mm -hmm. And if you can help him get to that point, mm -hmm. then he will not feel judgment from you. He'll be able to speak mm -hmm. openly about the things he did. And by the mm -hmm. way, there's a lot of things he did that at the moment you would judge and he knows mm -hmm. it. And so, so what he would do is he would not tell you those things. Just like any person on earth. If some, someone on earth knows that they're going to get in trouble for something they did, is it very likely that they're going to tell mm. you the truth? Yeah. No, of course. And so, so when we have judgment about the act, what, or the different things that have been mm. done, and even judgment about the capping emotions in a person, mm. we're not actually helping them get down to the real underlying soul-based, healing-based emotions. Mm. So whenever you're in a state where you're a medium and helping spirits, Understand what you want to do is get them down. You, you, you want to not judge them. Get them down. See, a lot of times with the, today with mediumship, what happens instead is we get heaps and heaps of judgment from the medium. So the medium says, oh, 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 that's a bad, that's a dark spirit. Oh, go away, go away, go away. Now, what does that do? All that does is traumatize that spirit further Right? That, further, that spirit now feels further judged, more judged than he's ever been before. He's come to try to resolve an issue, probably, and yet he's just been rejected again, <laughs> like probably the, for the 500th time, you know, 500th time of all the mediums that he's visited. And, and they're all trying to keep that bad energy away from them, when in reality all we need to do is help the person connect to their emotions and heal that. And that person won't be another person on the planet or in the, or in the universe who's projecting bad emotions to anyone else. So in the end, a lot of times, the problem for us, if we're mediums, is we, we, we get into this space of judgment. We reject what's coming to us. By the way, that's our law of attraction. So if this dark energy is coming to me and, and I'm feeling really petrified of it, that's my law of attraction. That's something inside of me that's unhealed. And I'm forgetting all of that, of course. And then on top of that, I'm judging that spirit, which causes that spirit to not be able to heal in that particular interaction, something that they could heal. And so my suggestion is not do those things. Start yeah. looking at the emotions yeah. within. So with regard yeah. to your, da your, your grandpa and, and, and it's others... It's not only my grandpa, I know, it's, it's my uncles. And, and the whole boy. families who were a part it's of the Nazi cool. system. Yeah, and There's a lot of one uncle... Killed yourself, hanged yep. yourself. I mean, it's a big, it's a big grief yeah. around that. Yeah, I, I would, I would just say huge. Yeah. So w what it's we want to do huge. instead is instead of judging their actions mm. and judging the choices they made, then what mm. we want to do is get them out of this anger and and out of the racial prejudices mm. and all the other types of angers that they have, and down into their grieving emotions, mm. so that they can heal it and connect to God, and. The less you judge them, the faster you'll help them get into that mm. space. I, I feel also I need to get in my grief in that. For sure. Mm, For sure. And as a child, I. And by the I way, this is something that I'd like to yeah. point out with regard to mediumship, but also healing and also helping people. I feel I need to if you're not able to feel your own grief mm. about something and you make out mm. you don't have it, you are not able to help anyone else experience mm -hmm. theirs. So, so what, what will happen is if I've, got, if I've got an emotion in me that prevents me from experiencing my grief, every single person who comes to me for help, I'm going to block from experiencing their grief. Mm. Does that make sense? Now, if I've got a deep anger issue towards men and I'm a healer, any man that comes along is going to feel that anger. and He is not going to experience anything emotionally that's going to release in him until unless he's a man who's browbeaten by an angry woman if i'm the woman does that make sense and if 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 i've got an emotion inside of myself that is you know really conciliatory towards women i am not going to ever confront any emotion in the women that need to be confronted of how much they want to domineer men i'm not going to cons confront that emotion so the key always gets back, if we want to help others, is firstly to focus on healing these emotions within ourselves, mm -hmm. whether we're a medium, a healer mm -hmm. of people on the spirit world or here on earth. Yeah. I have also my grandmother, the, the wife of my grandfather around me, and she, she's, she, she loves me very much, and she, she, she really loves if I, if I could, you know, Yep. 
Yeah, and just... many of the spirits who have passed and who are now in the spirit world and who are on the divine love path and are even in the celestial kingdom feel quite frustrated that there's not enough helpers on earth who can help these spirits in dark conditions. It's much harder for a spirit in a, in a celestial kingdom mm. to help a spirit in a dark condition than it is for us. The reason why is the spirit who's in a dark condition more easily connects to a person on earth than they can connect to any other person. In the, in the, in in the spirit world or, here on, here or anywhere in the spirit world. And for that reason, it's so important to understand that many of our spirit friends who are celestial spirits are just waiting for many of you to have a desire mm. to use your mediumship to help these other spirits. Mm. Does that make sense? I can see yeah. So if you can bear that in mind, that would be good. Yeah. Anyway, um, we'd like to finish off our session if we can now. Thank you. And uh, I'm sorry it's getting really late and I could keep going with questions, but it's, it's six o'clock already. Um, tomorrow night we'll be having the session, as I said, down at Bracken Ridge from 7 p.m. onwards, and it will be about emotions, truth and families. And, uh, and then, of course, it will be two weeks' time uh, back here at, uh, at Butterham. Thank you so much for your time and attention, guys. Thanks. And, and now over the next two weeks, can I ask that you practice one thing? Practice living in your desires. And if you don't know what they are, allow yourself to start discovering some. Can you do that? So rather than trying to live in all these negative emotions all the time, just practice seeing what some of your desires are and if they're harmonious with love, live in them for a bit and see what it feels like. Anyway, that's just a suggestion. Love you. See you then. <laughs>